Hi everyone. Welcome back to a word from Cornerstone Counseling. Thank you for your encouraging words and comments that you shared after the first video went live last week. I admit I'm feeling somewhat vulnerable and nervous about posting these videos. However, my teacher heart and desire to share God's truth outweighs my fear. So, here I am. In choosing a word to focus on each week, I am selecting a word that is currently heard or relevant to what we are experiencing during the pandemic. The word for this week is Zoom. There are several meanings for the word Zoom, and the way it is most often being referred to these days is in reference to the app or web website being most used to quickly connect digitally with others from another location. The Zoom website has gone from 10 million users in December of 2019 to over 200 million in March of 2020, indicating just how much necessary interaction with others takes place on a daily basis, whether it be for business or personal use. Zoom is also known as a type of word called onomatopoeia, which means it imitates a sound such as buzz or boom or Zoom down the highway. Onomatopoeia is a great word to teach your children as they feel so smart for knowing what such a big word means and they can have fun thinking of many different sounds that words can make. Finally, Zoom means to move quickly with sound. The founders of the app Zoom demonstrated real genius in naming this app as that is exactly what Zoom does. It moves quickly into someone's home or office with sound or video. I really think it's quite an amazing aspect of technology. So today, using an acronym, I would like to zoom in on God's love, as I believe understanding his love for us through this time is essential to maintaining a healthy perspective during this COVID-19 crisis. And first, I apologize for the speeding cars zooming down the highway outside my house. So the first letter, Z, I bet you are wondering what Z word it's going to be, is Zephaniah 317. I chose this scripture because it is absolutely perfect for describing God's love for us. Listen to what it says. The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Wow! What an amazing word picture Zephaniah uses to describe how God loves and takes care of us. Now it's important when we're looking at a particular verse in a passage such as this that we understand the context in which it is written. Zephaniah was a contemporary of the prophet Jeremiah, who was also known as the weeping prophet because of the message he was asked to give to the people of Jerusalem. This message was one of judgment and a call to repentance because the people had turned from worshiping God to worshiping idols. Zephaniah, who was also prophesying judgment and repentance, spends two and a half out of the three chapters of his book calling people to repent and warning God's people that destruction was imminent. Yet, Zephaniah ends his book with hope. The last 12 verses of Zephaniah 3 describe the hope that those who love God and those who humble themselves before him can have, even in the midst of impending destruction. You see, our covenant-keeping God can never turn his back on his children. And even though he was allowing the people to face destruction, he promised he was with them. Now, let's take a deeper look at the verse itself. Z is for Zephaniah 317. O is for observe. Observe means to regard with attention, so as to see or to learn something. Every moment of every day we are observing. We watch or we read something and we make observations. And we all have a lens that we observe things through. Our heart, our mind, our background knowledge, 
we can interpret things from many different perspectives. For example, last week my daughter was working with our seven-year-old granddaughter on her sight words. When Christy held up the word ox, Grayson looked at it, kind of rolled her eyes, and said, easy, hugs and kisses. Now, Gracelyn was seeing O and X from her perspective, her background knowledge. Not necessarily the most accurate for what Christy was asking, but it was her own interpretation. God challenges us to observe things from his perspective. He is saying in the first part of Zephaniah 3.17, The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He's saying, don't look at your circumstances, look at me. I am mighty to save. The final command that Jesus gave to his disciples is known as the Great Commission, found in Matthew 28, 20. He instructs his disciples to teach others to observe all that I have commanded you, as stated in the King James Version or the English Standard Version. Other translations, such as the New International Versions, say, Obey all that I have commanded you. In other words, God doesn't just want us to observe his word or look at it. He wants us to obey it and teach others to do the same. What are you choosing to observe? Are you looking around your circumstances and seeing a raging virus, a broken economy, and troubles you never anticipated? Or are you observing what God has said that is truer than true? The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you and he will quiet you with his love. When you feel anxious or worried or scared, ask yourself, what am I observing right now? My circumstances or my God and the truth of his word? It is when we look to his truth that our hearts and minds can be quieted by so the first Z stands for Zephaniah 317. O stands for observe. The second O stands for over you. This comes from the last line of Zephaniah 317. He will rejoice over you with singing. When something is over you, it is usually to protect you, such as a blanket or an overcoat or a canopy. In the same way, God is rejoicing over us and with singing. One wouldn't rejoice in something he didn't like or wasn't proud of. And the truth that God rejoices over us with singing is a confirmation of his great, powerful love and favor towards us. My favorite part of mothering during the infant stage was rocking my babies to sleep and singing to them. I would spend hours singing hymns and worship songs and just rejoicing in this little person that God had given Ken and I to love. That is such a sweet memory for me. And in the same way, I encourage you to picture God holding you as his child, just as I held my babies with great love and joy and singing his blessing over you. For that is exactly what Zephaniah 3.17 says that he does. So Z is for Zephaniah 3.17, O is for observe, O is for over you, and finally, M, make a choice. God, in his love for us, gives us a choice whether or not to accept his love. Or we can just try to do things our own way and neglect his love. He has done everything he could do including giving up his one and only son to die for us in order that we might see how much he loves us. But the choice to receive and believe the love that God has for you is yours. So let me ask you a few questions. Will you choose to believe that the Lord your God is with you in the midst of all the chaos that we are experiencing? Will you choose to believe that he is mighty to save you out of whatever troubling circumstances he is facing? Will you choose to believe that he takes great delight in you, no matter where you are at in your relationship with him? Will you allow God to quiet your heart with his love instead of looking to something or someone else to feel love? And finally, just as I held and rocked my babies, 
Will you envision yourself zooming to God and being held in his arms as he sings tender words of love and comfort to you? Robert Frost authored one of my favorite poems, The Road Not Taken. The poem ends with this beautiful thought. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. I challenge you, make the choice to travel the road that is less taken in our world today. The one that says, regardless of what is happening, God, I choose to trust you and believe that you love me and you are in control of all that concerns me. I'm praying this week that you will know that you are loved infinitely more than you can imagine and allow God to love you the way that he desires to. I'll see you next week with another word from Cornerstone Counseling.